Hello, it's your boy Tosanyu. Back into my read along slash reaction series of the Blue Archive main story. It has been a little while, hasn't it? <laughs> Though that's all it took to continue the series. And I will be covering the final volume, part one. And the final volume itself is already a really big thing. Judging from the Kivoto's life I've watched, with its fourth PV, there's a lot going on. It's too much to talk about in this kind of prologue, but it's safe to say that you have to be up to date with the main story. So with that saying, let's get into it. Oh. Oh. It... We jumped right into it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Final. Where all miracles begin. A fissure splits open the daily lives of Kivoto's citizens. In a story subverted, where does Charlie fall? It's happening. It's happening. Well, let's get to it. Nanni. What's happening? <sighs> Who's speaking? Why is Black Suit there and why is a gun pointed at him? What's happening there? <sighs> this narrative has been subverted. The previously established context, structure, nature, intent, and interpretation have been utterly dismantled. What is meaning, truth, faded, tangled, inscrutable? Sensei, the stories so far have been for naught. The events have unfold from this moment on will defy all your belief, you know. You will encounter a world sans protagonists. There will be no villains, no conflict. Parallel lines will become entangled. The axioms, you know, to be true, all dismantled. A contrary reality in which the composition of your lies no longer has any meaning, context, probability, all mood points. This world will be one of absurdities, so incomprehensible. Even the difference between up and down will have no meaning. I wanna. Alas, your fated future has always existed just this way. But those times of the past have been long forgotten. So, allow us to begin again. We will begin a story that is not a story. End of Kivotos? Don't forget, leave your nature, reality, probabilities, and truth behind. My god. My eyes are like wide open right now. 
the music and everything. I'm feeling the chills. Let us turn the page to the story of conflict and betrayal, of usurpation and disarray. We will attempt to fit together the shattered pieces of this broken story. Please be aware, this is not a story meant to warm the audience's hearts or end in happily ever after. No, it is not. Instead, this is a story of rebellion. <gasps> Final volume. What a prologue. Oh, huh? That's the very first BGM that started the story. May all miracles begin. Oh. What? What just happened? And you... Uh, what is this place? More importantly, your body. You've encountered a chroma, have you not? Chroma. That's a word that means like colors. In the volume... 3? Volume 3? Beatrice referred to it as colors. But here they say chroma. The colors. Like in their visions. Or like the RED scene. I don't really like how inconsistent the translation is, but yeah. It becomes confusing if you are not really up to date with the story. So they're talking about that. Chroma. Let's refer to it as Chroma for now. How peculiar. How peculiar. The consciousness appears to be more or less alert despite contact. The Chroma. The chroma is best described as uncomprehensible, force looking outside of Kyoto's. Is it sentient? Does it have personality? Free will? I still know little of its true nature. But what I do know, that it's a deadly poison to Kyoto's inhabitants. Become exposed to the chroma, and you will never be yourself again. Your spirit will be shattered into pieces, and your body distorted into a new form. You may not die, but any Kivatos resident who comes into contact with it will no longer know themselves. They become distorted into a new being entirely. Fear not, the Chroma will not find Kivatos. For the Chroma to infiltrate our city, it would be like finding a needle in a haystack. It would be both a miracle and a disaster. I now believe you came into full contact with the Chroma, seeing as you still retain your consciousness. Pray tell, what happened to you? Well... Please. Allow me to see myself. No move. Now then, excuse me, Prophet of Trinity.
You're trapped in my web with no way out. Are you scared, Seiya? Afraid of the power out of Kivotos you can't tear your eyes away from? Your very existence attracted it like a moth to a flame. <sighs> oh, that's a star. And something around it. Well, this represents like the sky. That thing. You ventured a step too far into powers you didn't understand. And now, they've dominated you. I see. Someone attempt to manipulate the power of the Chroma for their own benefits. They perform a ritual to summon the Chroma to Kivotos. It's fortunate for us all that the ritual was incomplete. Which explains your current state. You did not directly encounter the Chroma. What you saw was a distant image through a window. A landscape. Barely discernible through the haze of your dreams. If you had reached through the window, you would not have been able to walk away as you did. Also, you did not walk away without injury. Your mind may be safe here in the space with you and me, but your body is likely disintegrating as we speak. That can't be. I can't. There are things out there only I can do. And I must fulfill my duty. And my friend... My friend is... Hmm. There must be a way to stop it. Seiya's a really weak body. He's like very, very fragile. There's not... Would ordinarily be the answer. However, you are fortunate to have encountered me, Kuzuno, the great prophet of Yakiyako. Kuzuno, I will send you back to your body safely. Of course, you cannot gain without equal loss. Give, undertake, right? Equal loss? Yes. A payment of sorts. For your safe return, you must sacrifice one of the essences of your soul. You must leave behind your ability to see the future. The chroma distorts the essences I speak of. Or perhaps it simply draws forth or bubbles beneath the surface. Regardless, Allow these infected essences to fester, and you will lose who you are to the chroma. But let it go. Extract the poison before its creeping fingers can grasp your soul, and you will be free of the chroma's erosion. What say you? Will you sacrifice the skill you're so proud of so that you may fulfill your proclaimed duty? Prophet of Trinity. Yes, I will. Said with much conviction and no hesitation. Is this for the sake of your friends? Admirable. Wonderful, wonderful. What a nice smile. She has such a nice smile. I really like her expressions. Farewell then, Seiya. Now that you cannot fight me back in your world, I do not exist here. <laughs> ah, perfected dreams may still flit about your periphery, like a kaleidoscope outside your window. Good luck. Ah!
Circo. My apologies for my tardiness. I had a matter to take care of. Okay, Matria. We are all here. Let's begin. We recently discovered the legacy of the nameless priest. Silly me for even asking, but who exactly are these nameless priests? Black suit. Even I understand the basics. Beatrice's ability to break royal blood. The crew's missiles strong enough to destroy the cathedral. They are all guests from these nameless priests. No. So putting my heads together, I have gleaned their technology makes that of Kivatos look like a little child playing in a mat. You are correct. The nameless priests were once masters of a world, predating Kivatos. Oh ho. Exactly. Before the world as we know it today, we had the nameless gods, the sublimes of their time. Only the faintest whiffs of the existence can be identified in the largely mysterious annals of Kivotos. What we do know of these gods is how they manifested themselves. Typhoons, cliff sides, and trees, lightning, the list goes on. They appeared as crude forms of nature, but in reality, embodied the mystery and terror of Genesis itself. There's very little I can say of the nameless priests who worship them, except that they harbor no kind feelings towards Kivatos and its residents. And while we've seen neither hide nor tail of the priests themselves, their technology remains lettered throughout these lands. There it is where my interests lie. Because as we've already seen, their technology fetches a high, high price on the black market. <laughs> but the goal called Ness and for me the situation has changed, and we have much greater concerns than price tags at the moment. Ah yes, it may have passed with the blink of an eye. But we observed the arc that we did. What do you mean by observed? This implies the arc is not an object to be seen, but a phenomenon that was observed. Well. <laughs> Fascinating. All this time I was looking for a physical arc. But you suggest it to be intangible. Which also suggests that using the Kaiser group to take up the Abydos Desert was a way. It seems I've made a mistake, so to speak. Yeah, they're referring to the first volume. Yes, yes. Fascinating. If that is the case, I could reasonably be seen as a manifested concept. I may not Jerry. Or swirling mysteries. Hmm. Well, speculation serves no one. Let's resume. The nameless priests and their troops, believed to be extinct, have made themselves known once again. The situation has taken an unexpected turn. Charlie's appearance, a failure to secure Kivato's greatest mystery. Losing our only territory in Arios, the Kakramaton's death. And now, we have the nameless priest, Legacy, the appearance of the Ark. Yeah, the loss of the territory of Arios was something that happened in Volume 3. And the death of the Kakramaton 
was in the Decrochromaton event. And this is like connected to the volume 2, kind of. Nameless Breeze. Yeah. The Nameless Priests are like basically the Kekakromaton as well. This is like really huge. And they've collected themselves here, but for what? Do they plan something? Things have gone awry. Well, this outcome was impossible, I suppose. But the facts of our current reality is that unpredicted and uncontrollable variables have rudely introduced themselves into our plans. We've lost control of the situation. To make matters worse. You mean to say... Beatrice has made matters worse. The Grommel would have never discovered the existence of Kivotos, if not for a ritual. Your garish ritual allowed the Chroma to come into contact with Kiwatos. Did you know the risk when you pursued your desires? No, no. Contacting the Chroma was never her goal, but rather to possess its power. Madame's motives were not ex to expose us to it. Even worse, she saw a personal gain with the Chroma's power. The audacity. The barbarism. It requires the attempt to take advantage of something so iridescently, in crime principle for purpose, so laughable. Tread much more carefully, little puppet. You, artist, suggest to sublime your own work, and then turn and scoff at that of others? Is that arrogance simply a requirement for tortured? Inconsequential artists. Depressed, madame. I don't want to hear anything from you, Decacomania. You and your silly little ventriloquism with some frame photo isn't the philosophical metaphor of the push and pull of fantasy in reality you believe it to be. All I see is two clowns performing at a circus. But of course! I understand, Dekakomania, but calm your fury. You must be understanding of Beatrice's injuries she's still nursing. Yeah, volume 3. She... Sensei beat like the freak out of her with the help of Arias. No, no. Let's all behave like the mature adults we are. We were all curious of how Beatrice's ambitions would play out, and she had no intention of bringing the Chroma to Kivotos. Regardless, we haven't confirmed the Chroma has actually discovered us. It peeked in through a window in a dream. It may remain just that. A distant dream. You're correct, and that window was only opened because of Charlie's sensei. I have said time and time again, sensei's existence is the cause for all these distortions. Madam, I stand by my words. We should have eliminated sensei the moment they reached the ugly head. As long as we exist under the cons of our academy city, Sensei's existence will surpass ours before we draw our next breath. That's how the dice rolls in the story. Stay right here like the sitting ducks we are, and we are subject to the rules and laws of this world. Take your road straight to hell! I understand. This situation is desperate. 
Allow me to offer this monthly screw its salvation. My solution will handle the nameless priest, Charlie, and the Ark in one fell swoop. What? In fact, the Chroma is fully aware of Kivoto's existence. Yeah, she summoned it. Like she, she tried. To be frank, I intentionally formed the chroma of our location. It is coming. <sighs> what is happening? Oh, Shiroko. Mm. Mm. Sensei can be protected no longer. Tos Sensei. With this. With this. Everything will be over. Sh Shiroko? Sensei! Sensei, are you okay? Then, I was like sitting there with my jaw, mouth wide open, speechless. And what happened? Did you have that dream again? Sese? Why are you examining me? Huh? What? Did I get shot? Uh, I'm okay, Sese. I don't have bullet holes anywhere. Right? Look. There's nothing wrong with me. So calm down. Good. You're safe. Thank goodness, you're not hurt. You don't have to worry. I'm fine, Sensei. It was just a bad dream. Everything's okay. Dead dream. A world. Devoid of color. The girl pointing a gun at you. A halo. It was distorted. The details are blurry, but I saw you die there. That's worse than a bad dream. I cannot explain how you and I experienced the same prophetic dream. Perhaps our past encounters within our dreams had some sort of influence. Do you... Do you know what it means? I wish I could give you a better answer. But I can only see fragmented visions since I gave up my abilities. All I can say with certainty is that all of this must be related to the vision of Kivoto's destruction I saw before. The destruction of Kivoto's. Six enormous towers descend from the sky, 
turning the world red. They scatter throughout the six regions of Kivatos. Until Kivatos, we know, today is nothing but a vague memory. Six regions. Gehenna, Millennium, Trinity, Abydos, Yakiyako, Red Winter maybe? In Shanghai, I think. And it's seven. Six regions. Hmm. That's what explains the fourth PV, where like everybody was involved. Mm. Don't worry, Sensei. No matter what happens, I protect you. Yeah. I'll be counting on you, Ahona. I'm always thankful for you. <laughs> That's right. I deserve some recognition around here. Alright, what's the agenda today, Sensei? Reign of the General Student Council? But, but will Reen believe that? I'm sure Reen will believe me. Reen is nothing, if not diligent. Well, if you say so, Sensei. I think Reen's a little scary, but I support you, Sensei. Hmm, it's still in Japanese, but I took like a screenshot of the um, fourth PV, where it has like the exact same CG but with English translations. Let me read it out loud. So here, in the top, it says like funeral. Investigations Club Charlie. Online. Last seen today, 8.33. Rin? Are you alright? Where are you right now? Hello? Are you there, rin -chan? Don't call me that. I've asked you not to give me any nicknames. Did you say destruction? Why do you sound so skeptical? You saw this in a dream? Well, yes, uh, but. You had a dream about Kivato's destruction. Uh, expressions. Mm -hmm. But you don't know how or when. And you have no proof in reality. Interesting. Destruction. I, I, I just thought it was important for you to know, Rini. I'm going to ask you politely to not call me that again. I, I'm sorry. Very well, Sensei. I look over some old data in the General Students Council's records to see if I can find any precedent. Uh huh? It would be beneficial to check the Hyakiyako Island Academy records as well. It's a rather mysterious organization, so the student database is by no means comprehensive. I may be able to unveil a clue a tutor. Are you saying you believe me? My beliefs hold no weight here. 
Even you seemed uncertain about whether or not it was real. But still, it must have discomforted you enough to come all this way to report it to me. Your intentions are entirely serious. The general student council president shows you to fill her space in her absence. So it's my job to help you. To honor the president's wishes. Rini, I knew I could call on you. I'll do what I can on my own. But you need more than your awake hunch to get to the other general student council members on board. If you can get the approval, we'll have more avenues to investigate, Sensei. As it stands, I can't allocate too many resources to this, but I'll gather the necessary evidence. I'll contact you when I know something. Until next time then.